God be all the glory and, and honor. I'm going to jump right in on board. And the first place I'm going to go is in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. the 19th chapter. Beginning at the seventh verse, it says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. And the second place that I want to go to is the book of John, chapter 14, chapter 14 starting at verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Yes. Father God, we just thank you and praise you, our God, our King. Yes. We thank you, God, Father, for your love for us, oh God. Mm -hmm. We're asking, God, that you breathe afresh to us on us today, God. Help us to see and hear what you are saying. Yes. We thank you, oh God, Father, for the Lamb of God that's coming back for his bride. Yes. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome everybody here and even those online. I want to welcome you to the Destiny Life Center International, International. Dinner Theater Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> it has been the food. King himself have downloaded. He have again gave clearance for everyone that's here online and also in this place. Mm -hmm. There has been a clearance for you to board and your tickets have been paid in full. Amen. But I come just to, just to give you, I'm standing as the host of this cruise ship. Amen. And I'm going just to give you a little, we, uh, when there's a coming attraction, sometimes we have the sneak preview. Yes. And on this cruise ship, I just want to know, I want you to know that the invitation is there because you all have been cordially invited yes. to a sneak preview of the wedding feast to come. Mm -hmm. But I just want to talk a little bit before we present the group that's coming in, the party. I want to talk a little bit so that a person can get, everyone can get an understanding why we're going to have this wedding feast. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we have where we had Adam and Eve. Adam was put to sleep, and our God. To performed a cesarean section, mm -hmm. and for you, all you don't, just so you will know, in the spirit realm, it is the man that gives birth. Mm -hmm. In the natural realm, it is the woman that gives birth. Mm -hmm. Our God put Adam to sleep, and when he took from Adam's rib, he did a cesarean <laughs> section, and he took out this woman. Mm -hmm. She was custom built. She didn't come in as a baby. Mm -hmm. She was full grown. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. what he did when he died on the cross, he actually had established yeah. his kingdom mm -hmm. in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. That was the second person giving birth mm -hmm. to the kingdom of God mm -hmm. in the earth realm. Yeah. Yeah. And so what has happened is because what was lost, what was lost in the garden, because of Satan coming into the garden, mm -hmm. that it was it was a lost paradise there, where the man and woman was separated from God, and a spirit is illegal in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. yeah. In order for a spirit to move, it has to have a body. Yeah. But our father looked down and he couldn't find anyone yeah. righteous, so he sent his only son. Yeah. He came as through a virgin Mary. Yeah. So you find yourself in Genesis. That's one port that we're going to. And then in Isaiah, we go to see a prophet. And the prophet began to talk about how there would be a virgin that's going to give birth. Yes. And we move on into Luke. And we see that this virgin, her name was Mary. She gave birth to a son. Mm -hmm. And this son is the Savior. Mm -hmm. yes. This son here, he gave his life because he came to, to, take, uh, to bring us back and to fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. See, we actually have belonged to God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. But we, it was lost, that he had to have someone to bring it back. Mm -hmm. So he sent his only begotten son. A couple of weeks ago, we had what we call here uh, um, Good Friday. Mm -hmm. And we had a service where there were seven speakers. Mm -hmm. The first three speakers, when they spoke, they spoke to the humankind. Mm -hmm. When they, when they one, one spoke, uh, Father, 
forgive them for what yeah. no, they know not what they do. Yes. Uh -huh. The other one was today you'll be with me with them in paradise. Uh -huh. And then the mother says, mother, behold your son, son, behold your mother. He was dealing with humankind. Uh -huh. The next three that he dealt with was actually dealing with the flesh when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh -huh. And then he said, I thirst. And then he began to say, it's finished. Mm -hmm. What was happening there, if you ever been around a person that's departing from this side uh -huh. of time, uh -huh. the body begins to go into a struggle yes. because the spirit don't want to let go. That's right. But when it got to that seventh word, and he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. What he did was he moved from the earth realm and went back into his kingdom. Yes. But when he, before he left, he established his kingdom in the earth realm. Uh -huh. When that baby was in the womb, and every one of us that named the name of Jesus Christ, we took on and we said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Uh -huh. At that point, it was explained that what has happened, you, you changed citizenship. No longer did you come under the rule of the prince of the power of the air. Now you came under the rulership of the king. Uh -huh. You got a dual citizenship. There was a passport issue. Your name was written in the Lamb Book of Life, yeah. and the passport was issued for you to move from the earth realm to the kingdom. Uh -huh. yeah. You also got a visa. That visa was through the name and the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And that gave you the opportunity to move under the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. When you are light that shine in darkness, yes. you are the fragrance of Christ. Right. But we're waiting. He, this is what, what would happen in the Jewish culture is that the parent would choose the bride and groom. Mm -hmm. The bride and groom may not have known one another, but the parent would be the one that would do the choosing. Mm -hmm. Then when, that, when the arrangement was made, it was called betrothal. Mm -hmm. Betrothal was like the marriage um, ceremony. It was, it was stronger than what we call engagement. Mm -hmm. It was like a marriage contract. Mm -hmm. And so you were betrothed to that individual. So when we make that, when we make the decision to ask Jesus Christ to become Lord of our lives, we actually have a marriage contract here mm -hmm. that He's waiting. But what would happen is, in the process of them being betrothed and waiting at that period, the bridegroom would go away and he would prepare a home for the bride. Yeah. And that's where we read here, I read here where he said, I go away and I come back because yes, he's going right. away to prepare that home. Uh -huh. And so what's going to happen is there is a marriage feast when the, when he comes back, when the bridegrooms come back, he's coming back for his bride. Uh -huh. He's coming back for those without spot or wrinkle. He's not coming back for the ones that just say you're Christians. He's coming back for the born again believers that's following his truth uh -huh. and following his word. Yes. The reason that you become a bride, there's an intimacy. Whenever there was a wedding, they had the wedding, there would be where the, when the groom come back, he would come in and consummate that marriage. Well, there's an intimacy into me, you see. And the only way that you can do that as children of God, we got to have that prayer life. we got to spend that time with the Father. we got to have the Word, the Word on the inside, because it's the Word to become flesh. So we're waiting. We're waiting for that time. And this here is a time where you will see that there's a sneak preview of the wedding feast to come. Mm. Where we are waiting on the groom to come. Mm. And so at this appointed time, we at this time are going to, we're going to welcome our bridal party in. If they come. Our first bridal party guest is the matron of honor. Her name is Faith. Faith is a prominent key to the kingdom of God. You cannot enter in without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must believe that he is and a reward of those that diligently seek him. Faith does not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Faith is the currency of heaven. Isn't faith beautiful? Our next bridal party guest 
is a host from heaven. It's a guardian angel. people of God. They keep us safe from demonic attacks. They nurture. They counsel. Through guardian angels there is divine healing. They strengthen us against temptation. They engage in spiritual warfare. Guardian angels intervene miraculously to save us from trouble. The heavenly guardian angel watches over the people of God. She is salt that seasons. She is the light that shines in darkness. 
She moves in wisdom and understanding, knowledge and wise counsel. She has fortitude, that is courage and pain and adversity. She walks in holiness. She has reverent fear of the Lord. She has a servant's heart. Yet she walks in authority. She eagerly awaits for her bridegroom as she calls him Lord.
in your workplace, in your neighborhood, and even in your church home, can someone look at your life and mm. say, here comes the bride. Yes. And I'm going to turn this over to our pastor. We remember what we see more than what we hear. Yes. The big question that we need to ask ourselves yes. is your name in his book. Yes. When it's all said and done, this would mean nothing unless your name is written in his book. Yes. That our Lord asked the question, what shall in profit a person if we should gain the whole world and our names are not written in his book you see it is easy for us to put our name on the church's roster and say I am a member of this church I'm a member of that church that's not important what's important is can you say, I am a member of his church? Yes. yes, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Shelley, for that powerful message. Too often, we see the church just as some religious entity that is there to entertain somehow we in the western world get this idea that the church is supposed to make you feel happy Amen. when we come to church we're supposed to sing and dance and shout and hope yes. but i believe if we should leave this place and go back into the same situation the way we came it was all a waste for every time we enter the house of God and we are in the presence of God, something needs to happen to us. We need to have a desire to make a difference. I've got to be different. The way that I treat my wife, the way I treat my children, the way I live in my community, the place that I work, every area of my life is supposed to shine there. So please don't see this just as Pastor Shirley put together a little skit. But see it as a message that the Holy Spirit gave to her to say to all of us. So right now, would you bow our heads with me, please? We, we really don't like to close our services without giving you an opportunity to make sure your name is written in his book. The book of life. There is a book. And if your name is not written there, it's not his fault, it's our fault. 